Hi folks, in this week's tech tip, I wanted to address a copying classrooms and some of the things you should know about how that process works and what's going on in the background. Um, hopefully this is quite timeless for high school teachers who are probably in the process of getting set up for their new classes and certainly uh, primary school teachers will not be far away from that point as well. Now in Google Classroom, to put it simply, if you have a classroom that you've used previously and you want to reuse all the content from that exactly as it is, or at least be able to uh, recreate it and edit it for a new class, uh, there's a really simple function in Google Classroom, which is copying a class. And if we go up to the menu icon at the top of a classroom in our homepage here, you'll see that we have an option to copy the class. Now, when we hit copy, we're prompted to just make any updates uh, to the name. I'm not going to do that, but in your case, obviously, you'd want to do that. Always a good idea to keep in mind that what you have up here should be quite short because you run out of space quite easily. Um, it's a good idea to put your name, maybe even any other information in the section heading because that appears below it. But putting that aside, uh, we'll just hit copy here. We're going to make a copy of this class. Now, what's going on in the background is that Google is taking that classroom and it's copying all of the assignments, all of the materials, all of the questions, quizzes and so on that I've created and posted in it. And it's making a new classroom with all of that content already saved there in draft form so that I can go and make those posts available to my new students when I've added them and as I go through the year. Now, the process, as you'll see, does take a little bit of time. I actually chose to copy this class because I know it only has one post in it um, and I know it should copy reasonably quickly. In your case, it might take a couple of minutes, it might take longer. Um, and you'll sometimes get a thing where it kind of freezes or it times out and then you have to refresh the page. But anyway, it usually works quite straightforwardly. So what I've got here, if I look at my original class, that's it, that's just that one assignment there. Um, and if I go back to this copy of it, um, you'll see that the assignment isn't showing up in the stream because it's been saved as a draft. So I would have to go into there, edit it, do what I wanted to, and then post it. Now, that's all pretty straightforward. And this is a very condensed view because at the end of the day, in most of your classrooms, you'd have potentially dozens of posts. So there'll, lot, there'll be lots of content in here. It copies your topics, how you've organized everything. It essentially makes a, a mirror image. The only thing it doesn't copy um, will be comments that are on the streaming class comments because it's a new blank classroom. But here's the thing I want to really focus on. Um, and this is, for me, the reason why I don't copy classrooms, but might not be an issue for you. When you create a copy of a classroom, sometimes the classroom that you already had, had resources in it that you had created maybe as a team or as an establishment and you have in a shared drive and you use that, for example, that slideshow as a master that you make sure everyone uses so you have consistency and so that if any changes are made to it to prove or update it, everyone sees that approved version. And so that's really beneficial. So if I go and have a look at the original classroom here in this post and I look at there at the, the actual file, so I've already opened this up. Um, now, if I go into that file and I look at its folder, this file, if I go back and where it's stored, I can see that it's in the technologies team shared drive that we keep all of our content in. Now, if I was making a new classroom, I would want to make sure that it had still got the links back to these master files that we use so that we, we're keeping consistent and we don't end up with lots of different versions of the same file. Whereas in the copied classroom, if I go and look in here, at the same file or what appears to be the same file, what I'll find uh, when I eventually get to look at where it's stored in Drive is that it's not the same file as this one. It's a copy of it. And so what happens as you copy a classroom is it takes all of the files that are attached to the classroom and it makes new copies of them. And it does that in your classroom folder. So if you look on your Google Drive, you've got a classroom folder and that's where it's making a copy of all these files. So essentially it breaks the link to where any original files were on your original classroom, creates a new copy of them that's totally separate from the original. For some people, that might not be a problem at all, particularly if you're just teaching a single class and nobody else is sharing it, you know, it might not be an issue. But for some people that can be really problematic. So I'll really quickly just show you an alternative, which is to create a template class. Now this is not a feature as such of Google Classroom, it's just an approach that we take, and I know that other teachers and other schools do. And that is simply to have a class. Let's just pick this one, for example, uh, a classroom which is only populated by your teachers. So you just add all the teachers in the, this classroom as a co-teacher, all the teachers should be teaching this uh, course. And then within that classroom, you create all of your topics and your assignments and your posts and everything, but you never actually add any students to it. 
And so basically, as you are in your other classrooms, you can just go to classwork, create and reuse the posts from your template class. So in this case, the, the practical craft template class, we can just reuse those posts. And in this way, when we reuse posts, you'll see that you actually have an option as you reuse each individual post to choose whether you want to create a new copy of the attachments, which is something you would do, for example, for a Google form quiz, because you wouldn't want all of the responses in one form, but which you wouldn't do, for example, if you wanted to retain the same master slideshow. Hopefully that makes sense. The long and short of it is that copying classrooms is a really quick and easy way to reduce your workload if that suits your circumstances. But please be aware that when you do that, it's creating new copies of all the files. So you might want to adjust how you work or how you manage where master files are or how amendments are made 